We're on a Windows 2019 server, and what we're going to do is install data deduplication. So just to confirm, we see here that we're on Windows 2019 standard. So in Server Manager, I'm going to go to Add Roles and Features, and we're going to walk through the wizard for installing data deduplication. And the option here is going to be under File and Storage Services, then File and iSCSI Services, and there's the data deduplication option, which I've checked. Click Next. And Install. And I'll click Close. I've added additional drive, so we can put data deduplication onto that. In Server Manager, simply go to File and Storage Services. And I'll go to Disks. And I've got a brand new drive, but if you've got a drive you've already got on there, then you can go ahead and enable it right away. There's my new drive. I'm going to bring it online. I'll right click and choose new volume. I'm just going to go ahead and choose the full amount and the default drive letter of E. Now during the drive creation, I can actually go in and enable data deduplication right now. But instead, I'm just going to do it the way most of you will probably do it, which will be with a drive that's already there. I'm going to move from disks to volumes because that's where we enable it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Configure Data Deduplication. I'm going to choose to enable it, and I can choose the General Purpose File Server. That's if you're just doing file shares. Or Virtual Desktop Infrastructure, if you're doing a Hyper-V and you'd like to. And then you've also got the Virtualized Backup Server option. And the Backup Server is really good because it allows you to do data deduplication on backup jobs, which will really save the storage for your backup server. I'm going to choose the general purpose. Now, where it says deduplicate files older than, by default it says three days. And that's because people make a lot of changes to files the first few days that they create them. So you may not even have the files be duplicated at that point. They may be slightly different, or they may be duplicates one day and different than the other day. So in order to take save some wear and tear on your server, three days is actually a pretty good amount. But if you wanted to do it right away, just change it to zero, and then it'll happen without waiting the default three days. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to change it to zero so I can actually run the data dedupe job and you can see the savings that we're going to get. We can also choose to exclude certain folders and files as well. I'm going to create a couple of folders. I'm in my E drive. I have a dedupe and a no dedupe folder. So I'm going to choose to ignore the no dedupe folder so that one does not get deduplicated. Now, also what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a text file. I'm going to type in this is a test and call it test.txt. I'm going to create another folder. I'll call it dedupe2, and I'm going to copy my test and paste it in there as well. So now we actually have two files called test.txt, which are exactly the same. I'm also going to drop it into my no dedupe folder as well. So now we have them in three different places. Next, I'll go back to my new volume, and I'm going to choose Add, and choose my no dedupe folder. I can also put in custom file extensions I'd like to exclude as well. So I'm going to put in .xyz, just as an example. When I check the Enable Throughput Optimization, it says during the specified hours, it's going to run data deduplication at normal priority and consume resources required to maximize performance. If I choose to not do that, then during the daytime, it won't take that performance hit. I can say just do the schedule at night and just let it run all night long, in this case, eight hours. But I'm going to increase that to 11 hours and click Apply. So now we have our schedule set, we have the folder to exclude, we have the file extensions to exclude, and I'm going to click OK. Now I don't want to wait for that job to run, so I can go into PowerShell, and I can type a command to get it to run right away. I'll type in start-dedupe-volume, E colon backslash, because it's our E drive, followed by optimization. 
Now, you don't have to capitalize everything that you see here. You could do everything in lowercase, uppercase. It really doesn't matter. But uh, just to make it easier for you to see it, I went ahead and did that. Now we see the job is queued, and our progress is currently at 0%. While we're waiting, we can see the deduplication rate currently 0% and savings 0 bytes. Let's take a look at the C drive. If you right click on that, you see the option to configure data deduplication is grayed out. So you can't do this on your system drive, but you should be able to do it on any other drive that is a normal type of volume. So in other words, you can't do it on your DVD, for instance. What I did was I went back into my E drive, into my dedupe folder, and I added about a 100 megabyte file, and I added another folder with that file as well. So I made three copies of the same file. Then what I did was I went back in to PowerShell, and I ran the command again, but this time I did it with high priority. So I did the same job as I did before, start dash dedupe job, volume E optimization. But then after that, I put in dash priority high, so that way it ran right away. And then I started doing some refreshing and scroll down until finally it says that the job was 100% complete. Now we should be able to see some actual savings going on. Now if I go back into my file storage services, we can see deduplication rate was 9%, savings was 192 megabytes. So each one of those files was about 100 megabytes. I made three of them. So what it did was it took one of those files and saved it, and then the other two files, it just created pointers to that location. So now there's only really one copy of that 100 megabyte approximate sized file. The other two are just pointers to that file. So we can see the savings just with three 100 megabyte files. If you don't see the savings right away, just go up to tasks and choose refresh. And then that way it will update after the job is done. Now we'd like to take a look at some hidden options that you can't see unless you go in to view and go into options and change folder and search options. Then we'll go to view and we want to make sure that a couple of boxes are changed here. One is we want to show hidden files, which I've already got that checked, but you may need to check that box. We also want to uncheck hide protected operating systems files. I'll click yes to that and click OK. And now we see something called system volume information. I'll double click on the system volume information and there's my dedupe folder. Now I see log, setting, state, and the chunk store. The chunk store, this is where all the pointers are to the different locations where the data is. So we can see there's my dedupe file list one on the first job that I ran, and then the dedupe file list two on the second job. If I click on data, and look at that, there is my 98 megabyte file that has been duplicated in multiple locations. So now it no longer exists in all those folders. This is where it exists. And all it did was create pointers to the other locations. Most likely when you try to get into these folders, it's going to give you errors saying you don't have permission. So you will have to give yourself ownership permissions if you want to take a look at this. So that is how you set up deduplication and how you see all the hidden information on a Windows 10.